Hi everyone, um, thank you for coming along to our screening by the looks of it. Sorry I didn't bring any popcorn. Um, if you have ever wanted to volunteer, mentor or enlist a volunteer to support your organisation, you're in the right place. Um, today we're going to be talking about how you can collaborate better across those various roles and we're going to be using three different personas to explain that. As we discussed three personas, we're going to talk about tips at various stages of a project life cycle. And there's a bit of a clue there in that we're going to ask you to start thinking about your volunteer partnerships a bit like a project and managing them in that way. So the point of this talk really is to show you how you can collaborate effectively to maintain and grow a really strong volunteer partnership. And I'm going to start by demonstrating our own effective partnership, I guess. Um, Sylvia and I met a few years ago and we have a shared passion for volunteering, for charities. We both kind of work in the space. Um, Sylvia is head of systems and technology at Advice UK, who are a membership organization. She's very passionate about the work that other nonprofits do as well and has been giving back both as a trustee and also more recently as one of the co-leaders of the London Admin User Group. So Sylvia is really passionate about what volunteer partnerships can do both for the charities and also the individuals who are volunteering. Um, she started spearheading a really exciting and innovative new program and um, which we're gonna tell you a bit more about. And that's gonna really pull through some of the things we're talking about today. Thank you for the introduction. It's always too good. <laughs> so let's see if I can follow. Uh, so Safia, you are a, a functional consultant manager at uh, uh, Give Clarity, and uh, like me, you have this passion for volunteering. You are a trustee at Lewisham Local. You are a volunteer for our charity, uh, which was we are very extremely grateful for you to um, to do that for us. And you've been involved in this initiative that also Pay and Nathaniel, other people in the room, are involved with a uh, called Technical Collective. Uh, and you really would like to see more people volunteering their skills in the ecosystem. So hopefully we'll, we found the recipe that we would like to show you today. So as Safia said, we are going to um, uh, look at three personas that we see in this effective volunteer partnership. Uh, there is the charity that uh, you may want to, you may be part of, or you may want to help. Then there is a technical expert and a junior um, um, volunteer that would like to volunteer their skills. Uh, as you can see, they all work together, not alone. <laughs> So let's start with the charity. Uh, I work for a charity myself, and uh, it, the reason why you may want to uh, enter a volunteer partnership as a charity is per perhaps because uh, volunteering is, you do volunteering as part of um, uh, the model of your charity elsewhere. Uh, I'm very passionate about being able to accelerate the charity's mission through tech, so you may, is, this would be one of the reasons why you may want to enter a volunteer partnership. You want to perhaps bring experience to your team, you don't have enough resources in-house, you can, could uh, expand your network. But it comes also with many risks. I'm very lucky because in my charity, I've got very extremely experienced people in my team, uh, but it's not often the case. So uh, finding the right volunteers sometimes can be hard because charities may not even know what they can do. I always make the analogy that you have a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce, but you don't have the, the key and somebody to drive it with a driving license. Um, when entering a volunteer partnership as a charity, you have to make sure that you get the timing right the project cannot last forever you can't rely on your um, volunteers forever so uh, you have to be mindful of that otherwise they're going to be uh, run, running away and you want to make sure that uh, whatever uh, solutions is given to you by the volunteers uh, is not causing any damage any technical debt and then if you were this morning at the talk that Nathaniel and I did uh, in the morning uh, a lot of charities do not have documentation or they've got poor documentation so it comes at risk. So the next persona we're going to talk about is the technical expert. So when I volunteered with Advice UK, I guess this was kind of my persona. Um, the technical expert that we're talking about here today is somebody who has already got substantial experience in the thing that they're volunteering in. 
right? So I think I'm pretty good at certain aspects of Salesforce. I can't build a house, so I'd say I'm a technical expert, volunteer in Salesforce, but not building a house. So um, one of our priorities really with these uh, focuses is that as a technical expert, you're volunteering skills you already have and you're able to demonstrate those skills to support the organization. We don't want to create any technical debt. We don't want to be effectively using the charity like a guinea pig. Um, so we want to be providing valuable skills. It's an opportunity to give back. A lot of consulting firms or other organizations may have volunteering days you can use. So as a technical expert, that can be a really valuable way to be able to give back whilst also fitting it into your day-to-day. It can also be a way to get more experience. I would argue that this shouldn't be the primary focus for the technical expert. Um, you should already have the experience before you're going into this. And that's going to lead into our second persona because you could argue, okay, I'm, I'm a technical expert. I know what I'm doing. Why not just stop there? Why do we need more than one, more than these two personas? I could go in as an individual. I could support a charity. And yeah, you absolutely could, but why not do a bit more? And that takes us to our final persona. Yeah, the final persona is the junior Salesforce professional. And for, the, for this talk specifically, we are talking about somebody who's entering the ecosystem and usually we're talking about junior admin. Uh, it, it's very unlikely that you want to straight away go into a technical role if you've just started. Uh, like, I'm um, sorry, uh, an architect role as you just started. So uh, what Safia was saying is that we would like not to match the junior professional with the charity straight away. Uh, we want that technical expert in between. The reason why you may want to volunteer as a junior admin is because it's so hard to get a job at the moment in the Salesforce ecosystem, especially for entry uh, level roles. You always uh, ask for a certain amount of years of experience. And uh, really we cry every time we hear somebody saying, oh yes, just go and volunteer for a charity. No, because it's not going to help the charity and it's going to help you. You are going to create technical debt. You're not going to learn anything. It's not going to work. So this could be a, a really big risk for the charity. The great thing of doing it this way as a junior admin is also that you can get mentored, uh, you can grow your network, you can build your CV in a meaningful way. And this is also the, it also fits in with the whole point of this volunteering partnership, which is to support the charity. So uh, for the purpose of this talk, we are going to compress <laughs> a life cycle of a Salesforce project in uh, four different uh, parts. Normally, it would be probably slightly longer, but we only have 20 minutes. So we, this is where, what we're going to cover. We're going to see what's the role of these three personas uh, before you start uh, discovery and planning, the build and the go live and beyond. And one thing that we want to make sure that we get straight since the beginning is that we are not talking about a first implementation. So if you think that you should, you can do a first implementation through a volunteer partnership, leave the room now because uh, don't, we're going to don't, don't no. stay, but listen to no. us, please. <laughs> <laughs> I might catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> so shall, let's start. Yeah, so exactly. As Sylvia said, an implementation is a much bigger task. It's laying the foundation for what your organization is going to do for the rest of your journey with Salesforce. So we're going to take that we're going to go to an expert with that. You know, you can speak to your account executive to get guidance. You speak to a Salesforce partner or a consultant to get that support. Um, what we're talking about here is before you start a smaller piece of work that could be developing what you've already built, enhancing it, adding a new feature, making an adjustment. So you're kind of already on this journey and you're looking to develop it with the support of a volunteer. The first thing that everybody really has to do is assess your capacity. So something that I do before I go into a volunteering opportunity is I kind of sit down and have a bit of a word with myself about time management and I go, how much time do I actually have to give? Um, that's really important for everybody. So whether you are the charity, the uh, technical expert or the junior professional, be really open and honest with yourself and the people that you're working with about exactly how much time you have to commit be really specific. So, you know, when I went into Advice UK, I said, I can donate a day. This is what I think we can do in this day. You know, we worked together and we formed a bit of a plan and strategy around that. So be really clear. And I think that's helpful for all parties to consider. Um, so this part is really kind of more on the side of your Salesforce professionals. So thinking about understanding the charity, you may not actually have experience in the charity sector and that doesn't need to be a blocker. So taking steps to understand exactly what their mission is, how they go about doing it can be really helpful. Um, two resources that I really like in this 
uh, scenario is the Charity Commission website, which every charity will have a page on and there's lots of information there about what they do. And also a little, um, I come from a marketing background, so I like this, but there's a website called Built With. And if you put any domain or any website into it, it tells you all the things that they might be using on their website. And that's a really nice way to hear about all the different third party tools an organization might be working with that they themselves might not even know about. So Built With is another good tool. Um, I've got two arrows here, but really understanding the charity is also kind of partly a responsibility of the charity as well. So if you know you're going to be working with a volunteer, your intern at the charity, maybe point them to some helpful resources and collate any information that you think will be relevant that you can give them. Maybe do that through a call or just send them an email with some links. Any sort of um, ideas that will help build that knowledge is really helpful. And this one, so planning your deployment approach, I think is really crucial. Now I've pointed it at the top two here, but really the junior admin should be involved uh, later on once there is a deployment approach planned. What this means is think about where you're building, where you're moving it to, where you're testing and so on. So in the Salesforce consulting space, we're probably all very familiar with, you know, building in a sandbox, moving it to a UAT environment, testing in there and then deploying elsewhere. From my experience, not every charity does this. Um, cover your ears if you don't like the words building in production because it does happen. Um, so I think this is where the technical expert can really work with the charity to plan what that looks like and then support the junior admin in actually going through that process. So discovering planning. So um, as you've done the first bits that uh, you've just mentioned, then plan the resources. Uh, you really, you all have to really, again, sit down and say, okay, from the charity, who of in our team can actually dedicate some hours to this project and, and, and explain the requirements? And the same thing applies, obviously, to the other two personas. Uh, the charity, hopefully, by this time, has uh, uh, made a list of their requirements so you can discuss them together. And this is a very important time for the uh, technical expert to um, and the junior admin to say, no, actually, we're not going to do that piece of work because this is a piece of development work and it's not fit this is not the right time to do it. You should uh, look for um, 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 a um, consultancy to do this piece of work. So I would call <laughs> Sophia. <No. laughs> yes. And then um, we also, at this point, to try and prioritize maybe one to three, one to 10, whatever, for how many they are. One thing that for me is really important is to agree a collaboration tool. At the beginning, you will start uh, contacting people by email, maybe perhaps by LinkedIn, and then perhaps on Slack. And, but at some point, you all have to decide, OK, the primary tool for communicating for this project has to be X, whatever it is. For the projects that we are involved with, we um, are very lucky because uh, Salesforce is supporting it. So we everything goes into Slack. Everything that is important knowing is into Slack. And, and documentation is built also in there. And then uh, one bit that is really important to us <laughs> is the business analysis. In running volunteer projects, we realized that uh, business analysis is one of the skills that is really lacking when starting the ecosystem. It's so hard to write user stories. <laughs> I find it so hard. And uh, I'm rubbish at writing user stories. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not surprised that it's one of the hardest bits that uh, the two uh, technical uh, experts need to work on. And this is also time to build the proof of concept once obviously you've discussed what the requirements are, map the process, done the business analysis. And the proof of concept is something that we see as something that the junior admin can keep with themselves to build to their portfolio to then use to build their CV further. Let's build. So as Sylvia's mentioned, that user story focus is going to be really important. Always bear in mind exactly who you're building for and why. Um, there are some great resources available on the London's Calling YouTube channel. Um, there's yeah two in particular, which I really like that talk about user stories. So just drop me a message if you're interested. Um, I think this is really important for everybody. So not necessarily everyone that's going to be writing the user stories or documenting them, but keeping the users in mind is really important throughout what you're doing. I think sometimes as a technical expert or maybe more so as a junior admin, it can be really exciting to want to try all of these new features that keep coming out. Um, but you've got to kind of remember why you're doing it. Is it relevant to my users? Is it gonna help them? And ultimately, you know, using Salesforce isn't a charity's 
mission usually they're trying to help other people they're trying to do other things um so salesforce is a tool to allow them to do that and you want to make sure what you're designing and building reflects that um communication i think you're going to see a lot of these arrows pointing to everybody now going forwards but that communication is going to be really important as sylvia's mentioned making sure you've established how when where you're communicating is going to be really important so stick to that and you know sometimes it can be better to over communicate generally rather than under communicate especially if you're a junior admin like don't be afraid to ask questions um that's partly why your mentor is there really to help you and answer those questions so communicate often slack is a great tool where you don't need to worry that you're like buzzing somebody's phone in the middle of the night but you can send them a message they'll check when they're available and you can keep that communication open um, throughout your build, um, usually towards the UAT or the unit testing aspect of your project, you will be testing in the sandbox. So bear in mind, as part of your deployment plan, you're not going to go straight into production. You want to test within a sandbox. And again, here, you know, we could have an arrow going to the charity partner as well. Um, they're going to be testing later on in the project, probably towards the UAT section as well. But really, I want to emphasize this for our two Salesforce professionals. Just because you're working in a volunteer capacity does not mean you should be operating any differently to the way you would at work. Uh, finally, this one, I'm gonna warn you, this one might seem a bit unfair, but I'm gonna point this one here. Um, everybody is gonna make mistakes. Everybody is gonna learn something, but I want to specifically call it out for our junior admin because there can be this fear that you're gonna do something wrong, that you're gonna break something. That is completely part of learning and doing that is only gonna help you learn more. That's why we use a sandbox. Um, so, you know, making those mistakes is a part of learning. You will get feedback, your mentor will support you. Everybody's gonna make mistakes at some point, but I specifically wanna call it out because that can be a fear that junior admins will have and embrace that fear. It's gonna happen. Part of this process is that you're supported in that journey. Woohoo! <laughs> go live <laughs> so it's time to go live and it's really important to communicate throughout uh, especially to your user that uh, changes are coming and that training will be provided uh, and this really applies to all three because uh, as a junior admin you may have not done training before so that's where the technical expert can set you up for success and the charity may know what better training suits your organization um, and uh, then this is also the time to hand over your documentation. I say hand over because something that probably I should have really underlined before <laughs> even more is the fact that throughout this you have built your documentation. And, uh, and I'm talking about these two uh, personas have, have built the documentation. It's time to hand it over to the charity. It's their job is not done. Somebody, it's important that you make sure that they understand they have to keep it up. It's not something that you're just going to put in a corner and forget about. And um, uh, this is also the time for you to celebrate what you've done and ask for some references to the charity. Uh, you, uh, even as a technical expert, you may want to ask some references and because this is something you can build in your CV as well, but more so for the junior admin because you can remember the proof of concept that I talked about before. You may ask the charity if you can deploy it into another um, developer org in a trailhead playground so that you can use it for it to build your portfolio. And one of my favorite things is to run lessons learned. And sometimes this can have a bit of a negative connotation. No, I, to me, this is when the time to celebrate. When we run a lessons learned at work, I uh, make sure that we don't forget. That we go to, into the rabbit hole or everything that has gone wrong, but actually you want to celebrate what's gone well. And also, yes, look back at what uh, may have not worked really well and you want to do better next time. Uh, so this, uh, the go live is the bit where, no, no, don't worry, just uh, the go live is the bit where, do you remember the refresh in the sandbox? <laughs> that can be very handy. <laughs> so kind of in summary about the three personas really is that they're all working together throughout this entire project. Um, the reason why we've kind of put in the two personas here is because we don't want people who are new to Salesforce and wanting to learn to be kind of left out there at their own devices and unsupported. So having that support of a technical expert can really help a junior admin accelerate their learning process with the support structure that you might get in a job. Um, so that's really helpful as a volunteer as well. Um, for the charity, it builds in a little bit more trust and security. You know you've got an experienced technical expert there who is supporting the junior admin and you're kind of getting 
a two for one deal as well. Yes. Um, I think for the technical expert, as Sylvia's mentioned, it is a good way to build up your own uh, experience. You're getting a bit more exposure to, to projects, but you're also building on that mentoring and teaching skill as well. Um, I think that's really valuable no matter where you are in your career. So, um, a few resources that we would like to share with you. So the first one is that the Technical Collective is the initiative that I'm involved with. And uh, please raise your hand if you're involved in the Technical Collective too. That's Lawrence, that's Pei, that's Lucas, that's, well, you helped me a lot, Nathaniel. So there's lots of people here that uh, have, uh, have supported this initiative. If you search on LinkedIn, you'll see, you'll find the page and there are the the um, uh, forms to uh, for you to um, uh, apply and then I think this QR code should take you to the documentation that we share as part of a technical collective when they when they start a project so it's has been built by professionals uh, during Salesforce uh, community sprints and uh, it's just a template that you can use if you are entering a volunteer partnership as any of the three personas this is, could be your starting point and then this, this is your, yeah. your article. So this one does have the words account engagement and Pardot in there, but um, I think a lot of these tips really apply to everybody. So change management is going to be a recurring theme through any project. Um, in this article, I've outlined a few key considerations and steps for that as well. Thank you. Thank you. We yes. can maybe take a question as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? If you are a charity and you want, would like to take part in Technical Collective, please array, come to me because uh, what we are lacking at the moment is a few more charities. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, could we get a quick show of hands? How many of you have volunteered Salesforce skills before? Nice. Right. And how many of you Lucas? are a charity <laughs> looking to get some Salesforce volunteers? Okay, you guys should Ooh. speak to each other. Maybe use the Technical Collective yes. to connect. Um, happy to take any questions. If not, thank you thank very you. much. Oh. No, the QR code should be for the, uh, for the um, documentation. documentation. Yes, on how to start the project, what to use for the project. Do you want to go? Yes. Well, what's the link if somebody wants to join? So I think best thing is to go through the um, through LinkedIn. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, but if you search Technical Collective on LinkedIn, it does come up and you can follow it and there's links there. Yeah, if you go on the Technical Collective LinkedIn page, there are a couple of posts and the posts include links to sign up both as a charity and also as a Salesforce professional. Yes. Uh, I think we had one question there first, oh, yes. if that's okay, but we should be able to take both. Of course, yes, absolutely. This is what, so for example, uh, I work with Abigail and just a couple of days ago, I said, you know what, we may need some, somebody from the technical collective because we've got a few things that uh, we really need doing and uh, they could be a great project for a junior admin and we don't have the capacity to do it. So um, the process is that to use, there are sign up forms and then we, it takes, the matching is not uh, something we do straight away just because of in a period like this where we've had all, all sorts of Salesforce events that then uh, we need to catch our breath. Um, and, but then normally I would say what we've seen is that a good uh, amount of time is six months for the projects to, to run. Because as I said again, you don't want something to run forever. You want a beginning and an end, you want some outcomes and outputs. I think it, well, it really depends on how many resources we have. At the moment, we have quite a few admins and quite a few um, technical experts that are eager to help. So I would like not to lose their enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I would just add, like, as a consultant who's worked with charities on the flip side and, like, being a trustee at Charity Users Salesforce, the fact that you have an admin, the fact that you are the admin, will mean that, you know, when it gets to things like requirements and understanding your users, you're, you're going to really help that situation because you've got that first-hand perspective. So you'll bring a lot to that relationship by being an admin as well. So that's a very good question. Good question. But uh, um, 
So uh, perhaps because I've come from an uh, admin background, but uh, we have made the assumption that, uh, and speaking to people in the ecosystem, that if you're entering the Salesforce world, the first thing you're probably looking at is becoming an admin, and then you become a developer. Um, so this is why, and that's why we said at the beginning, this is the scenario we're looking at because, and we had a project where one of the requirements that the charity had was uh, very development heavy. And uh, thank goodness we had Nathaniel on the, on the job that said, actually, we are not going to do this <laughs> because that's not a point and click piece of work. There's no documentation. We don't know where the developer is gone, so we can't do it. Yeah. I think... Um, Exactly, yes. exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's the time where you have to go out, be realistic and go out and look for a partner. And there's, there's yeah, not all projects suit uh, a partnership. Yeah, I think um, I have a slightly different view. Yeah. I like the fact that we're, that we're starting with the admin role. That is definitely the one that people tend to look out for when they're starting out. Um, but I've worked for a couple of consultancies where we did have entry level developer roles. Um, so we get a lot of graduates that give clarity who come from software courses they graduate they come and they train as developers um so i think it is absolutely possible perhaps not the focus of the technical collective right now but i think if there's an appetite for it if we've got technical experts who are developers then you know maybe that's something the future holds by the way thank you all for finding the room <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you deserve a prize just for finding the room so and thank you for coming to our talk thank you so much <laughs>